fascinating that in John chapter 8, Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. This is a very important issue because a Jesus who is not truly the Son of God, who is not truly the Word made flesh, is not a Jesus who can save anybody. So, yeah, that, that kind of brings us to the importance of this whole issue. Um, if somebody doesn't really believe that Jesus is God, like that's not a part of the Christian faith, you know, because mm -hmm. Christianity essentially, it says that Jesus came and he died uh, to pay for the sins. But if he was just a man, if he was just Michael the Archangel or something right. like that, then he could not have paid for anyone's sins. And when you really think about what the cross is, the cross is that one point in history where the unique God-man did what only the God-man could do. Because Jesus was fully divine and fully man, he could give his life as a substitute for God's people. That's why the Bible looks at the cross, looks forward to the cross and back to the cross as the very center point of history, where that one unique incarnate one did exactly what the triune God had intended to do from all eternity and brought glory to that triune God in saving a particular people. And so yes, when people deny the deity of Christ, they are fundamentally undercutting the very purpose of God in the gospel. And that's why the church has always felt that this is an absolute issue that there can be no compromise on. And that remains the case to this day. Another claim is that unless God himself died for your sins, or more moderately, unless a fully divine person died for your sins, then Jesus' death could not suffice for all the sins of humanity. I'm sorry, but this is just a wild speculation. The New Testament doesn't say anything like this. It's not self-evident. It's not provable by any compelling arguments. Admittedly, the atonement is a difficult subject, and Christians have said different things about it. If you want to think through some of those different things that have been said, I strongly recommend Trinity's podcast episodes 91 and 92, where I discuss this with Christian philosopher Joshua Thoreau. He talks a little bit about where these different approaches come from, when they arose in time, what theoretical and ethical problems they face, and really, you know, what is the Bible teaching about the atonement of Jesus' death? That seems to be the important thing. This idea that the victim of sacrifice had to be infinitely valuable or fully divine, otherwise that wouldn't be valuable enough to, quote, pay for your sins. This is just not taught in the New Testament. And it wasn't taught anywhere in early Christianity either. As far as I know, this general idea goes back to Anselm, and some related versions of it pick up steam in the Reformation. But this is not going to help to defend an unclear and difficult theory, whatever your understanding of the Trinity is, to pile onto it another speculation about how the atonement works. Let's not try to illuminate the obscure by something that's equally obscure.